Hello everybody, hopefully you're having a wonderful, fantabulous, and mystical day. My name is Emmanuel Aguilar, aka Mystic Fox 4, and on today's episode of All Art, No Breaks, um, I'm going to be exploring some shape design, and how different artists uh, approach it, and how like I, I like, or what I like about them, and then we're going to later on uh, introduce like some shape design in, in my work, and uh see like do some studies and figure out like exactly what i want to do with my shapes um and like how to exactly do that we're not going to do it in this episode though so without further ado um let's get started so we're starting it off pretty fresh pretty fast and pretty um shapey so this is a studio that i found actually on artstation when i was browsing through uh i know i actually don't uh, show searching through ArtStation on the character design thread. Like I said in the last episode, be, in order to save a little bit of time and just show you guys some things and talk a little bit, um, I'm just going to preemptively just kind of find these things. So this is going to be uh, one specifically on a studio and um, on a student in particular. Um, I believe this studio is a school, but because of language barrier and I don't know like what this says, um, I'm not able to like tell you exactly um, who what the artist's name is or anything um, but I know it is on here if you do speak the language you can feel free to translate it yourself um, but that is what it is currently so I really like this design I like the presentation overall I think this character design speaks and resonates with me on another level first off for starters they have their character spotlight here you have your little color in the background to kind of bring it out and bring it forward in the presentation you have the silhouette of the character very low opacity in the background which really pops out but I really like how they did like the subtle details um, some things that you guys may not know about me, like in what I like in work, is I like when people make things that are really crispy, but then come back and do little details like this, because it just adds so much depth to the actual piece, and like those small details are what really makes the piece. These details is what makes you, pulls you towards the middle of the piece, and like this, and you know, keeps you going around like this little, um, bit over here of the shine on the, the the very stylized uh, cuffs that he has on and just overall the piece just s speaks like uh, the bone and everything it's just really well made very very well polished I think 10 out of 10 would draw again so um, I also like the different iterations of the colors they did as I was talking about the last episode the color thing I really liked from that one artist from arts from um, riot uh, I don't remember the name off the top of my head so you're gonna have to you know forgive me but um, I did like that and as you can see here they're doing different color iterations uh, which is really really nice um, and then they do the backside of him without the bone on his back the only thing that I can notice on this character design that um, that is kind of off is the fact that there's no bone like usually if they do this and they don't show the bone they usually throw it here somewhere just so you can see it or this would be actually a perfect spot to show the bone and then just like a quick little arrow here just to signify that it would be here um and then you can also just put the bone here and then have like a little shadow version kind of like one of these and it would just have the bone on it just to to um showcase the bone on his back um also the silhouettes are back so he put the silhouettes in and they um you know made them stand out so you can actually see it now this is also just as a forewarning, this isn't just this character. So this is a series of uh, character designs. Uh, this is the character we're looking at currently, but they have three other ones, which I'll probably show in another episode. Um, unfortunately, because of time constraints, I'm just not going to. So this guy, 10 out of 10. I really like the shapes that he has going on in his character. We have the bone that's in the back. Very distinguishable, although I don't understand why it's flipped here, but... Um, very distinguishable with the uh, bone in the back. The entire character is very strong. He has that very wide feeling to him. And just the shapes overall, like if we were to cut out just the head or just the, sh the body shape, it's very um, like reminiscent of the actual character. And I really like this small detail, which is they put the head in here so for context so you could see what the character looked like before they were a zombie. I think is like on point I think that that's very beautiful it's very good so we're gonna be moving on to the next one we're gonna be kinda of going through these quickly because I'm only really giving myself like 10 minutes and I feel like I can talk on forever about them um, but this is going to be the actual studio so if you're interested you can go ahead and check out their stuff I believe they're a studio and they're a school in um, 
Su Sao China. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but this is the actual um, stuff that they have there. Um, I believe these are student works, but I could be wrong. But you're going to have to go ahead and look through that on your own time. But they have a lot of really, really great character designs and things that people have made, which is kind of interesting. I, I, I want to go ahead and look through this at a later date, but we'll probably make that into an entirely separate episode because they have so much content that it's actually unbelievable. We're probably going to be using this as a reference for future, for future, future escapades. Anywho. All right, so this is going to be Yu Yu Wong. Now, I found this artist quite a while back. I actually didn't find this one recently. I really like the execution of the actual line work and how they did the single um, gray in the back just so that you can see the tone and the silhouette of the character. Unfortunately for this one, they didn't do it on the side or anything, any more presentation than this. But I do think that this serves a pretty good purpose in terms of the shape design because you can clearly see the shape of the gun. It's very vis like uh, distinguishable. You can see the shape of the guy in his pose. It's very like like juxtaposed. I, I don't know if that's the right word for it. I don't exactly remember what juxtaposed means. <laughs> you forgive me. I'm going to be asking for forgiveness a lot in this episode. But like I really like the pose of the character and how he has the whole setup. And I really, you know, it, it's weird to say this, but I really like this small detail here, right? Because it shows like, oh, he works like with ice or maybe or like uh, the, the reasoning for putting this here is really nice. Like maybe he, he his gun freezes things or something like that. Um, which is, you know, something that people sometimes don't put in. Um, I, I would have liked to see maybe some blocks of ice with, like, uh, enemies inside of them, maybe. I think that would have been really cool. But the silhouette of the character, pretty spot on. You can tell where the gun is. You can tell where the character is. And you can tell where, like, this ammunition or whatever these boxes are. Um, you can see a little bit of the content inside. They look like shells for the main gun, which is really cool, too. Um, and then they have the uh, flats of the character. Again, I would have really liked to see uh, different iterations of the character, like color-wise. But this is p perfect. It's amazing. Um, I do like the line work. The draftsmanship of this is very high. Um, and, you know, it, I'm, I sound like a found boy, but... Yu Yu Wong, if you ever watched this, your work is amazing. I really like your stuff. Uh, if anybody else is interested, go ahead and check his stuff out. It's going to be in the description down below. Next runner up, we have Wen Qian. I'm probably butchering that. But, so, I really like this, these designs. These designs are like next level, very shapey, very representative, colorful, like, super super well execution in terms of rendering um now i normally don't go into rendering but in this episode i'm going to talk a little bit about it just because of the whole shapey thing so when you're rendering usually you want to have a uh top a side and then you know you want to be able to distinguish what sides are what and i really like how in a lot of these designs here the way that they did this is they made it very clear like what's the side what's the bottom you know but with different values and colors that they were using in the piece not to even mention rust and stuff like that that's another detail entirely but just the way that they were executing the uh shapes and really distinguishing like what is going to be kind of in what shape and what pattern and things like that especially this big axe thing that he has on his back i think that's a very very distinguishable shape that you're going to probably be able to recognize without even having the character in the panel or in whatever you know setting it is like if you just have a character that's holding that type of weapon where it's very shapey and very distinguishable it's going to be very recognizable as well um same goes for these daggers and the silhouette of like how his back is i would have liked to see what is on his back because i actually have no idea what that is like what this thing is but i think it's fine i think um it's also distinguishing kind of all of the characters because this guy also has a round thing on his back. So maybe that spike is going to help the player distinguish who this character is. Um, I also really like the way this character is like very small, short, stubby, but he is, he has a big old sword on his back. He has a little ax, uh, which helps distinguish in terms of shapes from all the other characters. Unfortunately for this one, you don't really see this ax kind of, um, uh, in uh like on the outer rim like kind of how you see this one like i would have liked him to be holding it like here and here um just because you can see the axis and it breaks the silhouette and you can you know see them a little bit better but in terms of representativity like if we just made these into just gray blobs they're pretty pretty distinguishable like just separate the head from the body and uh the weapon and it's very distinguishable um i think it, it stands out even if we were to like zoom out a lot 
which uh, we can't right now because we're on our station. But, you know, it, just imagine we're zooming out, right? Um, it's very distinguishable about each character, like how their shapes are, their sizes and relativity to one another. Because right here in this, you know, thing, I think I think he could even be a little bit smaller just to distinguish him a little bit more. But I think it's a pretty good bet. I really like how they um, did these sizes, though, and how they did this little head thing here, something that they slayed. Uh, the rim light is a little funny. I, I really like rim light. I didn't even notice it until just now. But they did put it on the black background, and that's very nice, too. So you can actually see the silhouette of the character, and they break out a little bit more of that form to come closer towards us. Uh, rim light, if you don't know, is really good technique to be able to distinguish the character's uh, shape and give it more volume. Um, normally, I would say, like, you know, use it very uh, sparingly, like, you know, because it's something that you can use that will be easy to make your character pop out more but it's also something that like if your all of your work has rim light makes it kind of boring kind of old like you know if if you do it a couple times it's probably just going to be redundant um so you know try doing different things in order to do it but in this specific example it works very well so if you're going to do something similar like this in terms of character design and how you're showcasing your characters i think this is the way to go all right, so that was Wen uh, Kian. If you like their work, go ahead and check out the description. I'm going to have them listed down below. Um, I'm putting most of the people's, the, these uh, studios and individuals' profiles in the description down below. Um, uh, it's going to be probably ref going to their main page, so you're going to have to poke around a little bit. But it's going to allow you guys to explore their artwork in general and kind of see what you like. Because a lot of them have more things that I'm not even diving into, just because of the sake of time. Uh, my timer just went off, so I'm going to make this last one here very, very quick. So this is going to be Quan Ji Wang. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I really do like this artwork. This artwork is, is really nice, mainly because the whole shape thing, but also because a lot of the details that they put in, they put a lot of time into some of the line work and draftsmanship that went into this. And I do think it shows in the final uh, iterations of the character. Um, one thing that I would like to point out is like you can very much distinguish like each diff each character from one another. Like this is the guy that shoots rockets. This is the one that uses uh, knives. And this is the one that, you know, has a giant syringe sword like it, it's very distinguishable and i think if you were to put these characters in a game or in a comic or anything you can very much distinguish them very far away so let's say they're fighting far away in the background you can tell who's who and you won't really have to um do too much to figure out who's who also colors in this is very distinguishable of each uh category because you have one that has the blue like cyan kind of color um then you have the uh, red swords with the red eyeball and you know the the cyan eye and then you have the orange right here which I think is really good I like the fact that they're distinguished by colors as well so going back to uh, shapes um, I like the shape of the syringe it's very noticeable uh, very um, outspoken in terms of the rest of the actual design I really like the shape that he used for the actual mask here how it's like the doctor's um, what is it called? The the not a witch doctor. Is it a witch doctor? Comment down below. Let me know what what is this? I forgot what the name of this type of mask is, but um, I like the fact that they use this and you, they use a little bit of steampunk inspiration for this part. Or maybe it's not even. I, I I'm pulling blanks here, but this reminds me a lot of like steampunky. Like I have a lot of little gadgets on, um, and then I like the design of the actual cloak thing that he has on, like his clothing. It's very nice. It has a little pattern to it. It's simple. You know, he uses RDRD very well. Uh, I think it's representative of this. Um, I'll probably go into RDRD in another episode. But good job. You did. Doing great, man. Um, so that's going to conclude today's episode. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you guys did, make sure you smash that like button. Um, if you have any comments, critiques, or... I mean, I don't know why you would have critiques, but if you have anything to say, comment down below. Let me know what you what, what your thoughts are. Um, if you guys know what the name of this mask is, let me know in the comment section below. I'm actually going to probably look it up after this episode, but let me know in the comment section what this mask is called. I know it was for, like, like doctors and stuff, like, in, in like, medieval era, I think it was. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, also, like I said... All the artists are going to be down in the description. Check them out. Like their stuff. Whatever. Uh, use their 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 work as study material. I'm not saying to go to their site. Rip their stuff. Because these people work very hard for what they do. And I believe they deserve a little bit more of uh, like a 
uh, credit for what they do. All right, guys, as always, don't forget to stay mystical.